Hi guys. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Miller. I'm a senior here and uh, my major is film, television, and digital media. Uh, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about the professional world, uh, something that we're all going to be entering into very, very soon and sort of finding a way to fit into that. Um, So for the first two years of college, I was actually a biology major. Uh, I was on the clear-cut path to med school. I wanted to be a doctor for as long as I could possibly remember for reasons that I'm sure are shared amongst a lot, like most doctors. Uh, it was a desire to help people in a significant way. Now, when you have a goal like that, the path is pretty obvious. Um, you know, some sort of science bachelor's degree, med school residency, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's what I was going to do. And However, after my second year of college, for reasons I still don't entirely understand, I ended up performing flying trapeze in the circus. Now, I know, before you guys start asking me where exactly my life went so right, <laughs> let me give you a little backstory. Growing up, I was a competitive figure skater. From the time I was about five or six years old, uh, my life was basically train, eat, sleep, school, repeat. I had very little time for fun things, even though I truly did love what I was doing. I was very disciplined, and my parents had enforced in me from a very early age that school would always have to come first. So high school was ending, and I was prepared to hang up my skates as soon as I got to college. Now, like pretty much everybody at the school, I was a very good student. All AP classes, high GPA, extracurriculars up the wazoo, basically everything that people told me would get me into the colleges of my choice. And they were almost right. I got into many different colleges, with scholarships, grants, the whole shebang. One exception. That was UCLA. UCLA was actually my dream school, the only one that I really wanted to go to. And that one rejection letter was enough to sort of turn my very orderly and planned world upside down. I was pretty crushed, and I didn't want to go anywhere else. So my life was very dramatically falling apart. I told my parents I didn't want to go to school and that I wanted to run away and join the circus. They thought I was joking, and so did I. Um, little did you know. So what was I going to do besides school? Well, I was actually a very good ice skater. Um, and not the one that you guys typically, typically think of. I wasn't an Olympic hopeful. I competed at the national level, but I actually just hated competing. I hated the behavior that competitions would bring out people. What I really loved to do was um, do shows for people, and I sort of built up a reputation for having good performance skills. So with that, I was approached by a professional um, producer for ice shows, asking if I would move to Orlando, Florida, and perform in their show that they were opening at SeaWorld in just a few months. Now, a chance to ice skate with Shamu. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I said yes, obviously. Needless to say, my parents were very proud. <laughs> but they were supportive. Uh, they made a deal with me, saying that they would allow me to do this for myself before I started a frighteningly long career on my way to being a doctor. But just one year, that was all I'd get. One year, and then I would have to go back to school. Sounded okay with me, so I agreed. But then, I found a loophole in their plans. After that first year, I just wanted to do more shows. Uh, so I signed up for college classes online and continued to travel. Being around people who had built their careers on shows and performing and traveling, it was both scary and inspiring. In my mind, that wasn't what life was supposed to be, like what happened to the 9 to 5 job. These people just wanted to be quote unquote artists. Something that I thought was a silly and unachievable idea for anybody, save for a very select few. During those two years of online school and shows, I grew tired of always being in the ensemble. I realized, however, that I wasn't going to be the solo skater, the star of any show anytime soon. Not because I wasn't good, but because those girls who were in that position had been doing this for a very long time and had developed their reputation with show producers, companies, all of that. I was young and brand new, but I didn't intend on sticking around long enough in order to build that kind of reputation. I needed something that would make me stand out. So I began training in aerial dance, thinking, maybe, someday, I could put that act out onto the ice, making a hybrid and doing something that nobody else did. Now, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's taking a circus act where people climb up a fabric or a hoop or a trapeze and put it over the ice with ice skates on. Surely flying 20 to 30 feet above people's heads ought to make me a little bit different. 
Perhaps this could be my niche. I know, I know, it's, it's actually a terrible idea. Like, um, sharp knives on my feet and super cuttable fabric, they're not a good combination. Not, not even a little bit. And yes, it's very dangerous. My mother still has mild heart attacks whenever she sees me perform. But people like it. It's pretty. To my surprise, my plan kind of worked. I trained hard in between every show contract that I had. Eventually, I got up the confidence to put a video together and send it out into the world, hoping to get hired for something, anything, literally, anywhere. I got my first job at a theme park in Tennessee. And from there, it sort of spiraled out of control. Once I had that job under my belt, others started opening up. And all of this happened within a few short years. The mixing of aerial and skating is so rare that I could probably count the number of people who do it successfully and on a regular basis on one hand. Aerial led to flying trapeze. Flying trapeze led to stunt work. I did trapeze on primetime network television shows and commercials. I spent a lot of time on television sets and on studio lots. I fell in love with the whole thing, with filming. Now, with my background in performance already, and my academic, my academic interests were slowly slipping away from biology and moving towards entertainment. It made me think, why did I want to be a doctor in this first place? The truth is, I just wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And I happen to be pretty good at science. And as I said earlier, I just wanted to help people. But looking out to the audiences every night, five, 10,000 people, I realized that I was making a difference right then and there. I was using my performance to tell a story, one that people may or may not be able to relate to, but at least it takes a second out of their day to sit back and smile. To me, that's one of the most powerful things out there. All of this was happening, but I was still trying to reconcile my desire for a formal education. The two didn't really want to go together. I had stories to tell. So when it was time to transfer to university, I chose to major in filmmaking. Not just anywhere, but at UCLA, one of the best film schools in the entire world. It seemed like a goal that was out of reach, much like it was when I applied as a freshman. To, to this day, I still can't believe that I was chosen to get it. But I think I finally found where I belong, and it's because I managed to finally stand out. Film itself is a mixture of visuals, performance, science, and technology. A perfect combination of right brain and left brain. My science background and my performance background, without having to choose between the two anymore. I'm unique here because of this background that I have. Something that I never would have experienced if I had gotten accepted the first time around. It's something that I would carry with me as I begin my future career in the film industry. Now, I'm not saying all of this to boost my own ego, although I'm okay. I'm okay doing that. Yeah. For you guys. For you guys. Um, but, if, but as someone who has already had experience in the professional realm, I'm trying to emphasize the importance of making yourself stand out. As we graduate, we're going to be entering the workforce, going against legions of recent college graduates, just like us, with similar education, similar skill sets, similar resumes. What's going to make our resume go to the top of the pile? We're all unique. You just have to find the right way to showcase it. Do what you want to do, but make yourself into something that's hard to compete with. Somebody that is an asset to a company because you're you and nobody else is. You have to find your niche. Thank you guys so much for listening.